How are we doing, Ross? I'm all right, mate. Welcome to part two. We're joined by Andy, who, can I just say, is not from in Aberdeen. <laughs> Andy, Aberdeen I'm, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you now. I've got the old Gordon's Pink Gin. I've had a top-up. All right. Good stuff. It's like I'm alcoholic, isn't it, on the weekends? What do you think? I've got sugar-free iron brew. <laughs> Made by Gerders. Made by Gerders. And I've, uh, I, had a, I had my vodka last night when I was watching the box and so I had some, uh, had some syrup French vodka and finished off the bottle of Haku, Japanese vodka that I had. So the Grey Goose will be going up in its place. You're a bit of a vodka head, you aren't you, Andy, really? Oh, you know, when you think about it. I don't drink a lot, but I like when I do drink. I like nice vodka. Eh? I like good quality stuff. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a vodka man, mate. Uh, I'm not even a big boozer, to be honest. I like a bit of a weekend tip. I like Guinness, don't I? Uh, yeah, my mate drinks a lot of Guinness. Eh? He likes Guinness. Well, doctor down here had to join doctors. Says, "Oh, you need to get some iron in you." So I had a test. I failed loads of shit for you know when you have a piss and your piss is not clear. Hmm. They call it crystals, don't they? So you have to drink more water, Porky. I went, yeah, all right. And iron deficiency. Well, other than that, I got 36 right out of 38. That's all right. Yeah. So I've got Guinness to sort the iron deficiency out. I'm eating more sprouts and I'm drinking more water. But the good thing is I'm off the old kettle crisps, you know, Big Ron. Big Ron's a big kettle crisp fan. You know, balsamic vinegar, and I got addicted to them. I've decided to swap kettle crisps. You know what for, Andy? What for? Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar McCoy's. McCoy's, eh? Pop, pop, bag. Good. No, what I tried last night. My mate came round and he brought round his, uh, I think, Shore, S H O R E, like seashore. It was uh, these seaweed crisps. Oh, fucking hell. I'll tell you what, they were good, eh? Lightly salty. Seaweed crisps. Oh, I was mega, eh? They're really, really good. I'm telling, I've never tried them before. Do you, live near my... Do you live near the sea? No, really, not. No, probably about 30 miles from the sea. 25, 30 miles. So I sent my son a message. He was out and about. I said, He's going to get more of these. <laughs> but they uh, didn't last long, eh? They were good. Probably a lot healthier sound... than crisps. You what? Probably a lot healthier than just eating crisps. But I do like crisps, isn't it? I don't want to sound like that prick Coogan Cassius or Eddie Hills talking about <laughs> talking about crisps, but I am a bit of a, I am a bit of an old school salt and vinegar chip sticks and pickled onion monster munch salt and vinegar Ed. You know when you think about it, my little Sounds boy Reggie good. is like a ready salted man. You what? I like old salt and shake. You know. <laughs> They're old school, them aren't the salt and shake. I mean, that was a kid. Oh, that's what I like them. Yeah, it's, I mean, being a kid, it used to be used to be Frank Smith, not Spotty Frank. But Frank Smith's crisp used to be here. Yeah. You know that Frank Smith? Frank, Frank Smith, you spotty cunt. I'll wipe you out if I ever meet you, you prick. <laughs> you get in my way, you. Yep. When you I spoke about him the last time, eh? Spoke about him the last time, he cares more about. Eddie Hills and he cares about his family. Yeah. Do you know that Frank Smith from that show? Let me tell you this. Frank Smith, if I ever see you in a pub, I'll wipe you. You you weapon. <laughs> yeah, I've got his number here, Frank Smith. He blocked me. Hi. He's all right. I did a video, didn't I? I called him Richie Rich when we used to when I worked for Big Ron and wrote my ass. Yeah. But they're nice, aren't they? But Dennis had a fight, I forgot his name, he was called Danny Summer. Um, Dennis came steaming into office. Ah, you've gone on Twitter or Summer and put a video out offering. Uh, I'll tell you what it was. I'll tell you his name. He was a nice kid, actually. He lived at Jersey. Me, and Dennis. He trained us from Jersey, I think. And he uh, and I decided to Dennis says you need to start using your initiative. So I started to use my initiative. And one particular day, 
I was sat there in office and I was bored and I was thinking, what can I do to use my initiative? So this is what I did. And obviously, Chris Smedley and other people in boxing this all know what I did. I went on Twitter and I offered Connor Ben, I can't remember if it was 15 or 20 grand. <laughs> and I would have been able to say, well, in fact, Dennis coming, he goes, oh, you've been offering him. I'm not sure if it's 15 or 20 grand for Connor Ben to fight one of Dennis's fighters. When I forgot the kid's name. But he but he had a draw with Willie Warburton. Warburton. You know, Willie Warburton, journeyman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a famous journeyman that all he does is retreat and smiles at the same time. <laughs> That's what he does. He's 27 wins, 164 losses. And ten draws. Right, Mr. Danny Kennedy. All I'm going to do is go for look for blue bit on box rec. Danny Kennedy, nine three and one. Uh, he's an Australian kid, five foot ten. He's gone back out to live in Australia. He's a lovely kid, Danny, and we we used to get on. Mm-hmm. And I think it was fifteen grand. Crusher Ben were offered. But I sent it the offer to Barry her, not Eddie. Ah. Uh, they said they were going in a different direction with Conor Ben, which is fair. That just means they don't want it. And it, they more or less laughed at the offer. So Crusher Ben would have been on more money even then, you know, when he turned pro. So but I was testing wars to see what they were on, but I think he'd have probably beat Danny. Yeah. No disrespect for Danny, but it'll probably beat Danny. But I was trying to use me use my initiative. And Dennis couldn't see that. He went, oh, you've been causing lots of bollocks on Twitter, haven't you? I went, well, you told me to use my fucking initiative, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, but what are you going to do if they say yes to that? I went, you know what? I'll pull 15 up my sand. Might have been 15, might have been 25. But I would have been ill to then. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... But you just got to try and think outside the box. So I said to Dennis, do you remember when you went to the Roy Jones fight? I think Roy Jones for Richard Hall. I might be wrong on that. But when Roy Jones fought Clinton Woods, Dennis went out to uh, America to to try and get the fight going because Clinton were ranked number one. He was British mm-hmm. Commonwealth European and European champion. And he was trying to get Clinton Woods to fight with Roy Jones. And uh, he made Clinton stand up at this press conference. They slipped into a press conference. And uh, Clinton stood up and he said, I fought the best in the UK or I f- and, and, and I don't want to fight the best in America or something like that. And Roy Jones said, I am the best. And uh, they got it on, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you now. Who we were? Have a look. Roy Jones. Roy Jones, Clinton Woods. Have a look. Yeah, Glenn Kelly. It was Glenn Kelly. And I'll tell you where they fought. They fought at Florida, I know all right, Miami, uh, American Airlines Arena, Miami, Florida, in 2002, February. Roy Jones knocked out Glenn Kelly in the, let's have a look what round it was. Oh, you've got to press bout. Oh, it's gone off, box rec. Box rec's a lot of shit. Look, Roy Jones knocked Glenn Kelly out. And after, in press conference after, Dennis has sat with Clinton. Clinton probably didn't even know what was going on. They just went and, and didn't know what was going to happen. He got a microphone shoved in his hand and Dennis has gone, get up and talk. So and Clinton said, yeah, I think he's even said it on my channel. I fought the best and I want to fight the best. And Roy Jones has gone, well, I am the best. You've got that right. So they thought. Clinton got beat. If you read Clinton's book, Clinton says, 
It's the only fight I ever had in my career that I were at my depth. Mm -hmm. Roy Jones at the time were basically a Superman, wasn't he? Ah, he was there. Uh, but he got else. But he got done for juicing, didn't he? Uh, so was he juicing then? I just don't know. Right, exactly. So as far as I'm concerned, Roy Jones, you're a prick. <laughs> as simple as that. Well, you don't yeah. juice when you fought just... Clinton Woods. There's an asterisk next to Roy Jones, what he's done in his career. And so is uh, yeah. Evander fucking Holyfield as well. Because he yeah. got good, didn't he? So were they on it all the way through the career? Evander Holyfield were training with Lee Haney, strength and conditioner, a fucking Mr. Olympia. Uh, I don't know how many times he won it. One of the best bodybuilders ever, won he? Yeah, so you've got to ask questions there. Huh? You've got to ask questions there. Disappointing that. It's when you hear stuff like that. It's just... It leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Eh? You what? I'm saying it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you hear things like that. Eh? See, way back then, these, these guys, you looked up to them, eh? you thought they were mega, and then you find out stuff like that afterwards, and it's like... So, so point ah. of the makers, Dennis is like, oh, try and use your initiative. So I did. But Crusher Bam, he's probably been on good money all his career. Yeah. Like, because of his name. He's not won a fucking belt. Yeah, won a He's belt. never had to pay a fight. This is he? area belt, English belt, yeah. British belt, Commonwealth, European or World belt. He ain't got none of them. He's got a fucking WBA Continental. And the other day, Eddie Hills is going, oh, his resume, his resume. And what resume? His resume. Oh. What? 23 and 0. Too many are padding the records out in boxing and hoping for the Saudi lottery. Yeah. You think we can get a shortcut to success by going on social media and getting a following like Tommy Fury? Who was Tommy Fury beat as a pro? What is he, 10 and 0? His record's abysmal. Where is he now? There's not been any sign of me. He's all about doing MMA. Ah. Uh? Red today he's on about doing MMA. I think he had an operation on his hand or something, you know, after that last fight, you know, break his hand or something. Well, that's right, I know. Who Nobody knows? Yeah. Word. <laughs> Nobody believes a word any of that lot say. Would you believe anything Tommy Fury said to you? Nah. You know, I had a I had a boss when I was an apprentice motor mechanic. And I uh, always remember, it's probably the best advice anybody's ever given me in life. And he says, as you're going through life, he says, trust no fucker. He says, because uh, there's always, everybody's out to get, if you live like everybody's out to get you, you'll not go far wrong. He says, <laughs> and there, is, there is good people out there, eh? but uh, there's a lot of folk out to get you in there, a lot of chances. Eh? Would you believe out there, John Fury said to you, Nah, I would, I would just accept he's telling me it, but I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you wouldn't believe any shit. No. Nah. I don't believe any of that, so. Nah, I can't even do my book. Well, here we go. Right. Let's power through this. Did you watch the full show? Yeah, well, I've seen Ben Whitaker fight. Well, I actually saw it after. I didn't realise it started. My mate was messaging me, but I've seen it, seen it since. I've seen uh, the Eubank fight, Opatia fight, Wardley Clark, Better BF, um, Bivol. I never seen the, the girls fight. I wasn't really interested in that. I was getting my tea when that was on. Well, this is how I look at it. I'm sorry for boring people with that Barry Yearn thing. They went and had a bit of back and forth with Barry Ian. Ah, oh, you've been causing me loads of bollocks with Barry Ian, trying to make Danny Kennedy against <laughs> Conor Ben. <laughs> Dennis, she told me to use my initiative, you prick. Right. Did he ask you ever, ever ask you again to use it? Are you initiative? Yeah, <laughs> loads, listen. <laughs> loads of time. But he said, can you check with me first, Russell? <laughs> <laughs> can I use my initiative? <laughs> I had about 20,000 followers on Twitter it's caused some right knackers if there's knackers to be caused I used to cause it until Eddie Hills got me kicked off Twitter you can't get me kicked off YouTube though can you Eddie 
Not when they're earning off me. Not when they're earning money off me, you prick. <laughs> right. The first fight on we're obviously at Alakal, Joe Gallagher's fighter versus Gonzalez. He won. So good luck to him moving forward. Then we have Ben Whitaker against Liam Cameron. It were given us a draw. But the experts and the media had Ben Whitaker winning the first fight. Took rounds two, three, and four. Liam Cameron won. And round five, well, we saw what happened, didn't we, with ropes. Now, the ropes looked to me like they were a bit slack. What do you think? Yeah, I looked that way, yeah. But I thought uh, he was taking a beating. Liam Cameron was just starting to put a beating on him, wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of what I thought would happen. I put a, luckily put a... a you logical, won money on it, didn't you? I put a logical bet on a draw because I thought there's no well, way... You send me, go... send me a screenshot of your bet. Nah. So, well done, Andy. <laughs> you always bet on draw, you pussy. <laughs> That's only because I'm no faith in the judges. Uh, I Andy, thought never know, gonna Andy get... let me stop you. Do you know when I introduce you from now on? I'm going to say, this is Andy and he's not from Aberdeen and he's the only man <laughs> in the betting industry. I had a bet on Liam Cameron against Ben Whitaker and bet on a fucking draw. <laughs> <laughs> and won! And lived to tell the fucking tale. I think I also won money on the Wardley Clark, the first thing. Yeah. <laughs> on a draw, yeah. I always put a pound on a draw or two pounds on a draw. It's, you never, this is the way the judging goes, eh? If it's going to be a close fight. <laughs> Quids in. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. So we've covered that one. The second one, oh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Let's not just leave the Liam Cameron situation, right? Ben Whitaker, did he quit? Yes or no? I think so. Yeah. So are we changing his name from Ben Whitaker to Ben Quisitor? <laughs> I mean, he was he wasn't a showboat, and he wasn't getting all his own way. He looked weak. I thought I thought Liam Cameron looked strong against him. Yeah. You want, mate? I thought Liam Cameron looked much physically stronger than Ben Whitaker did. And uh, he was just bossing him about, wasn't he? I mean, so he was we... getting a few... Whitaker got a few flashy punches in, but wasn't he doing anything? There was nothing in them, eh? Do you know, Liam is six foot two, Liam. He used to make middleweight, you know. He, he, he got down to 158, but Sam Sheedy fight. He flogged Sheedy. He flogged him. And he flogged that gentleman. But obviously, he got a four-year ban, didn't he? But he won ABA's Liam years ago and signed with Dennis, but he could have got Olympics, but he wanted the money, so they went for obviously he went went to turn pro with Dennis, but it didn't work out and he weren't dedicated enough. You know, Chris Medley trained him then for one I don't know what happened, but he ended up being trained by Clinton Woods at some point. Uh and that didn't work out when it went in with Clinton. Uh he couldn't turn up for training and blah de blah, you know, all that. Oh, Clinton, I can't train. Clinton goes, Why not? Because I've just dropped a tin of beans on my foot. Clinton goes, All right. Clinton fucking shot round to his house to show me a fucking tin of beans. He didn't even have a fucking tin of beans in the cupboard. That's a famous <laughs> fucking story. Nah. You see, this is why, you know, decorated world champion boxers can't train fucking. Uh, Fighters because they're not as dedicated as they were. Yeah, no ins and outs. Eh? Could you imagine Scott Quigg? I know he's a trainer now, but Scott Quigg, he used to be up. And I, and my mate Frank Smith from Berry. Every time I go see him in Berry, we we we'll go driving down this road near where he lives in summer seats, and he goes, "See that big mountain there, Porky?" And I go, "Yeah, that's where Scott Quigg runs every morning." We're Weighted rucksack on his back at the same time and the same length of run and all that every day. Quiggy running up there, uh, getting the most out of his body, and he couldn't wring any more out of himself. Do you see where yeah. I'm from? Yeah. Not everybody's as dedicated, are they? Do you know what I mean? Do you think? He looks, he looks maybe more dedicated now, though, William Carmen, isn't he? He's maybe. He's maybe woken up and thought, I need to do this soon. No, I don't think that. If he could make middleweight five years ago, why can't I do it now? Mm. His bone his bone, stru his bone structure is the same. Mm. You don't yeah. all of a sudden decide 
when you get to 30, to Liam's age, or 31 or whatever he is, oh, I'm a light heavyweight, when you're a middleweight all your life. Yeah. Six foot two is quite big, don't I? So. Yeah, he, he, listen. Big frame. Yeah, and do you know what? Liam's never been stopped in ring or... I don't even think he's been down in sparring. Yeah. Stop tough guy, yeah. Well, Liam, you know why you're tough? Because you're a big, stiff dummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I've got a soft heart for Liam. Liam was there when I started my channel. In office at Big Rods. Go look at my first video. It might be the first or second video. He's on it. You know what I mean? I didn't know what oh, I was okay. doing. I didn't even know how to work a camera. I hope it yep. works out for Liam and Tanya is bird, but you've got to be dedicated. But he's, he's got a pro, he's got the profile now that he's always wanted, hasn't he? Yeah, he signed oh. a deal with somebody as well, hasn't he? Eh? He signed a deal with somebody as well. Apparently, I don't know if it's bricked up or. Well, it probably good has. Good luck, good whoever he's signed it with. Good luck to him. I know it won't be Big Ron. Yeah, he not be winning another Commonwealth title. For three grand and defending it for three grand, will he? Yeah. Good luck to him. Uh, Sky Nicholson against Raven Chapman. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I never watched it. No, I don't want to talk about that. We don't want to get Eddie Hills as bit of fluff against <laughs> Steffi Bull's bit of fluff. <laughs> hey, and it won't pass me if it was Steffi Bull's bit of fluff or. If it's not his bit of fluff, it might be down the line. Or I bet there's some <laughs> peepholes in, in, in drilled out in wall in his gym. <laughs> Bulls uh, versus hills, eh? <laughs> well, what it is with Steffi, right? <laughs> Me and him used to be pals. We used to go out and that, didn't we, Steffi? We, he, he used to say, "Do you know what it is, Porky? You like, you like certain types of women, and I like women with muscles. He, he's into like muscular <laughs> women." He's like the purple hacky of uh, uh, boxing trainers. <laughs> <laughs> He's into like women that have got biceps. And shit. <laughs> Whereas I like him with a curvy arse and all that knackers, you know what I mean? And a pair of jugs. He, he's into. <laughs> he's into <laughs> He only goes in the birds he can't he beat in an arm wrestle, maybe. Yeah, he, he, if he if he can beat Steffi in an arm wrestle, he'll take you pictures to see Top Gun too. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it's <is> true. <laughs> Isn't that right, Andrew Bullcroft, you're wrong and from Denneby. Uh Purple Lackey will be waiting for you when you get to Armley in February Pop <laughs> Bang. I hope you're getting not guilty at your trial. Uh, anyway, in other news, water's wet. Chris Eubank Jr., a gimmick, against a guy whose name I can't pronounce, some dosser, took his time to get him out of there, didn't he? He said I met her. I was struggling to pronounce that as well. <laughs> um, I kind of went the way I kind of thought it would go. Away, but I thought he looked rusty and... Uh, I thought he looked a bit weight drained as well, you bang. That's just the feeling I had. But I don't know. What do you think? I think Eubank, right, is a cock with that tattoo on his head. That's that <laughs> air scalp tattoo on his head, it's a cock. It's not as good as mine. <laughs> yeah. He's ever done his one though, hasn't he? <laughs> But I can assure you, I got mine a lot cheaper than him. Anybody wants an air scalp tattoo on your head? If you're a bald headed, bald headed bloke and you want it done, why pay five grand like you, Bank, when you can pay 1500 with your Uncle Porky? Get in touch, Porky Corner. <laughs> at mail.com. I'll also sort you out a phone number if you need your teeth done. Or if you get your ear bit off, I can sort your phone number. <laughs> get it rounded <laughs> off like mine. Or if you want all your abs cleaning out, you know, all gunk, all junk that's around about your abs, they suck all it all, all out and stitch you back up. <laughs> I can sort all that bollocks out as well. I'm about as fake as the cum pop pop bag. <laughs> I'm bad for 54, kid. Uh, Newbank Junior. 
I think he's a prick. I think his dad's a bigger prick. His dad walked into an hotel years ago, an hour there, and he went. I goes, what's he doing over this bird who had about two brain cells in her head? <laughs> I goes, what's he doing over there, over there? She went, he's, he, he looks like he's checking for dirt on, on, on skirting boards anywhere. <laughs> and Hilton International at Sheffield, I go, his crackers him. Well, I think he's a cock and I think the son's a cock. The father had 19 world title wins and only four were champions. So what are the 15? Where did Barry Epstein dig them up from? <laughs> Answers on a postcard, Porky Corner at mail.com. <laughs> well, I think I'm bad Connor Ben up here. If they Listen, fight, mate. You and me. Connor Ben's a welterweight. You, you Banks a super middle. Strong yeah. middle. Didn't we learn note from Kelbrook fighting Golovkin? Crusher Ben, if he gets in that ring with Christopher Eubank Jr., he'll end up on the slab. And you heard it here first. He might not fight again. Mm. But he beat that guy, didn't he? Got a stoppage and called yeah. out Crusher. Crusher jumped in the ring and it was WWE pop, pop, <laughs> bang. There you go, isn't it? Yeah. So, fuck him. Right, so there, John. And then we move on to uh, Opie Tia, who's a pound for pounder, obviously, in top 10. Ah, yeah. Against Jack Massey. Mm -hmm. I like Jack Massey. I met him. I've been out for lunch with him, him, Joe G, Charlie Edwards, a couple of a couple of Sean, Yakersley, is it? The eight Welsh kid. Yeah. Uh, and another kid from Manchester. I forgot his name, but he beat Tyler Denny and he got fucking robbed. I went, they're all nice kids in Joe G's gym. Jack Grass is a lovely kid. He was obviously one of Dennis's fighters. I like Jack Massey, but he fell short. Joe yeah. G saved him for another day. It, that would have brought Joe G's heart to throw that towel in. Because yeah. he's lucky for reasons not to, aren't you? But Did the right thing, away. Look, Dennis threw it in Clinton Woods, didn't he? Brute Tower, yeah. Roy Jones were knocking him about. Sometimes your fighters are out of the depth. You come up against somebody a little bit special. Yeah. Opie Tia is not Roy Jones, but Roy Jones was super special. Opie Tia yeah. is a little bit special, isn't he, for a cruiserweight? He's yeah. on a different level, wasn't he? I, th I thought Marcy, after taking part of the distance... We'd, we'd do we'd do better, but oh, uh, twenty stone now, you know. Big yeah, big fat pig. He's needing a fight, isn't he? Hey, he's needing a fight. He's what's happening with him? He's needing a fight. He, he needs fat. a fight. It only listen. What well, first fight he needs to sort is his weight. He needs mm. about forty pound off. Yeah, but getting on with Jack Massey. Joe Jack Gallagher saved him for another day. Kent called it earlier on channel. He's yeah. probably saved his career by three years. Yeah. Did oh, the right thing. He was getting knocked about. I don't know if he's got any any damage to nose or cheekbones or eye sockets or all, but it was getting that way, wasn't it? Ah, getting bashed up, mate. We were getting knocked about. Yeah. So Jack Massey, go back to the drawing board. He'll come again. He got paid very handsomely. He's set up for life either way. Yeah. He can walk away and be set up, or he can go again. He's that type of kid. He's got a bit of drive in him. He'll go again. And I, I'll back him on here. I like him. Yeah. I like him. I like Opitier as well and what he, what he and his style and that. I think he's managed by Spencer Brown now, isn't he, apparently. Ah, right. You know, so that's going to be interesting moving forward. Spencer Brown, the man that can get things sorted, but he couldn't get Mickey Theo in the ring with John Fury, could you? That's what you're about. Spencer, we all know what went on back in the day, don't we? With my interactions and Mickey's interactions with you. You couldn't get big John Fury, big fighting man, in the ring or on the hard road, in the, in the ring with Mickey Theo. Why? Because he had no arsehole. There you go. So, Mr. Fix-It, 
So, right. Now we come to the juicy bits. It's Big Freeze. Freeze against White Collar Wardley. I, so. I pick Bye. Big Freeze because he lives up here yeah. at Burton near me. I pick Big Freeze for a simple reason. He's an Olympic bronze going up against a white collar guy. He should wipe the floor with him. He didn't. So what's it say about the white collar? Uh, sorry. What's it say about the Olympic team? Yeah. After the Ben Whitaker, Olympic silver, Big Freeze, Olympic bronze. What's happened? At least Big Freeze, though. Walked away from the ring with a big dint in his head. He didn't need a fucking wheelchair like Ben Whitaker. Ah, he uh, doesn't look good for the Olympics uh, team. But big freeze, I felt. I thought he would do it on points. I thought he would have taken. I don't think he was confident going into the first fight, fully oh. confident. So, I, but I thought he would have taken confidence out that fight. So I thought he did well. So I thought he would box better. But Wardley would try and turn it a war, but. Did you notice when he got hit and he turned, he was like hanging over the rope? I thought he should have stayed hanging over the rope and let the ref can sort things out again. But he turned around and he got caught one hour, a couple of big... Kind of shocked him, didn't it? It was... Um, I don't know. It was, but it's, when you seen his face, eh? Jeez. Oh, that didn't look good at all. It was horrible, eh? Oh, big freezer's face. Oh, I mean, his, his face was... Kind of... Oh, it's horrible, eh? Got put, like big that. freeze, right? I like him. We got put on bottom moon. Dead die. And fair play to Wardley, yeah. Yeah, Wardley's now top ten top ten in world heavyweights without yeah, a shadow right. of a doubt. Yeah. Big freeze back to the drawing board. I think what'll happen with him now, and I hope it doesn't happen. I think they'll let Johnny Fisher and Moses Atarame knock him about. Yeah. He might be better calling that day. I don't know. Uh, it's up to him, maybe. But... Uh, that was a horrible defeat. So He's 34 could've... in his next birthday. He stayed yeah. at the EIS too long. Yeah. Should turn pro way sooner then. Yeah. Wardley, he'll move on to bigger and better things. I hope Big Freeze is all right. I hope he's got a few quid out of the job. I know he has. Wardley looks like he is going to move on to big things. I'd like to see Wardley wipe out Chisora. Wipe out Dylan White, get rid of them because they're both dossers. Uh, wipe out Joshua, he's a dosser. And then wipe out Tyson Fury, another dosser. And then go after Usek. So why not? Yeah. I think he's that oh, well, boldly. Well. At least he wants to let his fucking hands go, doesn't he? Oh, I know. He's got a bit of power about him. Power? Listen, mate. He's that powerful. I'm starting to wonder if he's been on the special shakes. Oh. Because we didn't see that in his last fight, did we? Yeah. Oh, I thought that'd be a I thought that'd be a distance fight again. I, I thought it'd be another, but I thought it'd be a more technical fight. So uh, Big Freeze wouldn't get dragged into a war quite as much. But... Listen, Big Freeze has oh, people anyway. around him. His trainer, get rid of your trainer. He don't know what he's doing. Angel Hernandez. And Ben Whitaker can get rid of Joby Clayton. And whoever you are with, right? Yeah. But it says a lot for our Olympians, doesn't it? Ben Whitaker yeah. and, and, and it's Big Freeze. But I hope Big Freeze comes again. But the people around him will be saying, "Eh, you got caught cold, all that shit." No, you were cumbersome, fat as a pig, and slow. Get Freeze stone off. Get a bit of speed around you. And learn some footwork and move your fucking head. Yeah. That's the bottom line. You know what I mean? All that reaching, all that nonsense. Listen, when you're fat and big like that, you can't move. You can't move. No. So let's have it right. He needs a few home troops. He got carried away for a few paychecks and this and that. And in his dark moments, in the next couple of months, He'll be thinking, right, I need to make some changes. So get rid of them around you and go again, Big Freeze. I'm behind you. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to the main event because we haven't got long left now. Let's have a look. Five minutes. Right. Unless you want to do a part three. Uh, no, I need to get to my bed, to be honest. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> right, then. No problem. Right. Baturbia and Bibble. How did you have it? 
Well, I backed Viterbi after win either late stoppage or points. I think I said 12th round win. Um, watched, I thought it was a brilliant fight. Brilliant fight for the hardcore. Technical, technical fight, wasn't it? Oh, very technical. And both two different styles and both having success at various parts. But, I mean, I felt better be if controlled the ring centre a lot and he was doing a lot of the pressing, uh, putting the pressure on. But Bivol boxed really well on the back foot, I felt. But I thought a draw would have been a fair result. I thought it was a very close fight and some of the rounds were probably quite difficult to score, but um, most people seem to be going towards Bivol. I could see... I was a wee bit surprised that have got the decision when you heard the scorecards, but... I thought a draw would have been a fair result, but Bivol, aye, it'll, it'll be a rematch, I would imagine, eh? but I kind of felt a wee bit for Bivol, but it was a close fight, eh? there's no doubt about that. Well, I had beat a beam, as you know. Yeah. Uh, the only ones I got wrong, Liam Cameron, I had Whitakers to do him on points. Yeah. And uh, I had, uh, what other one? I can't remember what other one I fucked up on. You, wouldn't it be you might be Jack Massey and Opetire. Yeah, I had Jack Massey to beat Opetire, but mainly because he's a Joe G fighter. I like Joe G, but I just felt that Opetire uh, were there for the taking after his last performance. Yeah. But it's turned out the Styles make fights and he, he got he got to Jack, didn't he? So, yeah. yeah. There you go. So I lost my bet anyway, but listen, that's how it goes, isn't it? But. Yeah, I'd beat a bit to beat him, but you know, after I watched it a second time, do you know what? I think Bibble maybe shaded it, you know. Yeah. It was very tight, wasn't it? Very, very yeah. tight. Yeah. A draw would have been a fair result, yeah. One at ref judges bottled it, the other yeah. one, 116, 112. He needs fucking off. That was good. shocking, it. He was a Polish judge, I think, wasn't he? Fuck. What were you watching? Yeah. I agree with the deals on that one. That were a shocker, that. Yeah. Absolute shocker. Uh, I want to finish off on this. I don't know if we could... Did we mention this earlier? Uh, Crusher Ben. Uh, hang on a minute. I forgot, I forgot the question. I've screwed it up. Hang on. I'm that pissed. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I, I deserve a fucking scroll, me, mate. What a grand guy after the week. You'd be surprised, mate, honestly. We just don't, right. Let me just unravel this shit here. Let me just unravel this nonsense here. Hang on two seconds. Hang on, where's my picture gone? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, hang on. We, I, I don't know if we spoke about Eubank calling Saunders that. Oh. Shalom. Ben Shalom. And Eubank, right? Yeah. They're, they're saying Crusher's... Crusher, ben Shalom and Eubank are saying that Crusher is uh, is uh, serving a band. Did we speak about that earlier? Ah, yeah, we said that. Did, yeah. Do, yeah. Do, 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 right, if Crusher's serving a band, why ain't the, the board coming out and saying it? I know I'm repeating myself. I'm like ah. a fucking air bomb repeater on, on Guy Fawkes now, aren't I? I just think that the board needs to come out and fucking sort that out. Sort the, board, that. the board's not fit for purpose, I think, is what I said earlier. Right? The board? Um, well, Robert Smith got it ringed, didn't he, overnight, and everybody booed, didn't they? Uh, Why is that? Yeah. Get... Roberto Smith, where's Gary Sykes' belt? And another thing, you tool. What's your score out of 10 for your 17 year at the helm of the British Boxing Board of Control? Hey, Zero. You weapon. Zero. Do you know what I mean? You're not worth a pair of you know. You're not worth a. You're not worth a pair of them, mate. Ugg slippers. You're not worth and, and, and their shit as well. <laughs> <laughs> what we got left? Twenty eight seconds. That's it, Andy. You've been a real Good tonic, man. and I'm going to have some gin and tonic now. I'm going to finish right, right. the weekend off. I'm going to my bed. I'm working. Early. Well, then I love you, mate. Take care. <laughs> okay, mate. Hey, Take mate. care. All the best. Bye. Cheers, pal. Bye. Bye.